Hi everyone in uh, today's video we will be discussing a very fun problem and I haven't mentioned what topic it would be from because that's the whole trick of the problem and I don't want to reveal it so soon so this is one type of olympiad problems that might actually show up which is that it is not part of any topic or it does not require a lot of theory but it is just involving like tricks or just understanding of math in general and at the end of the video there is a fun and challenging question for all of you so stick till the end for that okay so let's begin with the problem so this is a problem from a team selection test uh, it's a practice team selection test in 2019 do pause the video here and try working out the problem on your own This video is sponsored by chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay so hopefully all of you have tried it on your own so let's try and understand what the question is saying so we need to solve this equation in real numbers and the first thing we can do is begin with guessing the most obvious solution and we can just see that if all the values are equal then the statement is obviously true so this is one solution we have so let's assume that not all the values are equal and let's just say that a1 minus a2 is some k so this would mean that a2 minus a3 is k over 2 and so on that an minus a1 would become k over n let's see what this actually means like pictorially so let's have a number line where a1 was somewhere here and let's assume that a2 was greater so we went k distance here for a2 now a3 let's say could have been backwards so we went k over 2 here for a3 and so on so it would have gone let's say forward more forward backward backward and the thing is that the last one has to end up at zero back at a1 so if you see what this actually meant mathematically now would be that k is a step plus minus k plus minus k over 2 and so on has to be zero because we begin at a1 and end at a1 this is what we get from all the math we did and this is where we see that this is actually more of a number theoretical problem and not an algebraic problem because all, everything we are working here is integers and we can cancel out k from everywhere So if we cancel out k, everything becomes one, because k equal to zero was already dealt with to get the most obvious solution, which was all equal. So we have this equation. So let's get rid of everything else. So we are and we are left with this equation, plus minus one over one, and we need to see if this. ever has any solution so let's try and expand it out and let's see what we get so we can ignore the denominator because the right hand side is just zero so it is the product of n minus 1 terms from 1 to n and all such n values and that has to sum up to zero so something like let's say 1 times 2 till n minus 1 plus minus till n and so on basically n of such terms so let's see how to work on this problem and sorry this sums up to zero let's assume that there is some number let's say a prime p between 1 and n 
okay so t would be in every single of the term except the one where that is the element that is left out so suppose p was here then it is in the set the set in every set except this term which is 1 times 2 times up till p minus 1 and then it skips out p and then goes on till n right so we get that because the sum of the whole thing is zero the right hand side is divisible by p which would mean the left hand side is divisible by p and every single term other than this one has p so it is divisible by it so p divides let's just say that it divides the whole bit and this is the last term left so p must divide this term as well okay so what does this whole thing give us it means that get rid of all of this so it gives us that p must divide this term as well so this term is the one which doesn't contain p but p has to divide it because p divides every other term in the sum and the overall sum is also divisible by p because it's just zero and what does this say about it p is a prime and it contains terms which is not p except p basically so the next multiple of p is like 2p right or after that 3p and so on and if p divides this term then this is nothing but n factorial divided by p so it has to mean that 2p must be less than equal to n so 2p must have been inside that sequence otherwise there's no multiple of p in the entire thing so this would mean that 2p has to be less than equal to n and this was true for all primes for all such primes so for every prime between 1 and n it would mean that 2p is less than n but recall what bertrand's postulate states so that is the task for you guys in this video is to look up what bertrand's postulate stated it basically stated that there is always a prime between n over 2 and n and if we use that thing we can just pick a prime between this interval so if we had picked the prime between n over 2 and n this would give that 2p was greater than so this would mean that we would get 2p is greater than n but that's not possible because we assume that the prime must be between n over 2 and n so that gives us a contradiction which mean that this is not possible eventually meaning that this statement is not possible ever for any n so that would mean that the only solution we get is uh, the this one so the only solution is a1 equal to an is the only solution okay so that was the problem so as for the challenge problem this is uh, this is a easy problem for you guys to work on uh, do mention your answers in the chat box uses the uses a similar thing we used in the previous problem so do work on this and write your answers in the comment section and thank you for watching and if you like this uh, keep watching more for more learning on chinta.com thank you Chinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation and remedial sessions.
the reason chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real olympians from leading universities in india united states and europe some of our students come back to teach at chinta from oxford cambridge harvard mit ucla isi cmi iits tifr and iisc for more information visit chinta.com